sword unbreakable. It could be a trap. Mm. Allow me. What? It's not a trap if you do it? Stealth is my middle name. Kubo and the Two Strings, it feels like a story that has been somehow a part of my life for my entire life. And, and I'll, I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Um, I mean, the, the actual story we've been developing for about five years. We started when we were working on Paranorman. And the original idea came from the, our brilliant character designer, Shannon Tyndall. And the, even, at, even at its early state, even in this most raw, kind of reductive state, it was this sweeping samurai epic told in stop motion. That was something that was really cool. It was something that we hadn't really seen before. And it really excited me because when I was growing up, I was an absolute nerdy, huge, obsessive fan of epic fantasy. I absolutely loved you know, Tolkien and Star Wars and Lone Wolf and Cub. I was a huge admirer of epic filmmakers like Ridley Scott and David Lean and Steven Spielberg, Akira Kurosawa and Ray Harryhausen. And so with this film, Kubo, it offered us an opportunity to, uh, to paint in those same colors. You know, we could aspire to that great pantheon of epic fantasy. And what's more for me, you know, uh, when I was a kid, right at the same time that I was, I was falling in love with animation and with with fantasy stories, I took my first trip to Japan. To uh, I took my first trip to Japan. I was about eight years old. I went with my dad, and and I'd never seen anything like it. I grew up in Oregon, and so to go to Japan 30 some odd years ago, it was like a, a revelation. It was otherworldly. There was something about the culture and the architecture and the art and the style of dress and the music and the food and the movies and the TV shows and the comic books. It was unlike anything that I'd ever experienced before and I was completely in its thrall. And that began a lifelong love affair with this beautiful, vital, transcendent art of this great culture. And so with Kubo, it offered, us, offered me specifically an opportunity to take all these things that I've loved deeply since I was a kid and put it into this one movie. What's more, you know, as you're, as you're developing these things, you start to find connections with your own life. And um, there, there's this great quote from the, the, from the great uh, filmmaker Zhang Jimu, who said, every boy wants either a train set or to make a martial arts movie. And I never had a train set. So there you go, that's the kind of kid I was. And, and, and as you're developing these things, you start to find connections with your own life. And I definitely saw a ton of myself in Kubo and his story. You don't even have a first name. Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> the mighty beetle is victorious! Fundamentally, this is a movie about family, and specifically, it's about that moment in our lives when things begin to shift and then change irrevocably. When we're we start out as kids, and then through you know through a, a series of transformations in our lives, we become adults. And this film, you know, basically distills that several year process down to an hour and a half. And uh, and for for me as a as a father to three kids, you know, I see it with my own kids. My oldest son is 15. My daughter's 13. God help me. And my youngest son is three. And so to see them going through that same journey that I experienced when I was a kid and to reflect on it from the kinds of things that I did, it was an opportunity for me to, to pour some of those observations and that perspective into this film because, you know, crossing that Rubicon from childhood to adulthood, it doesn't come without a cost. I mean, there is, there's joy that comes with it. There's, there's great many things that are gained in the process, but we do leave some things behind and that's what this film explores. It's pretty incredible, this cast that we have in this movie. I mean, these are some of the finest actors in the entire world. When you start thinking about these characters and who you want them to bring them to life with the voice, uh, you pull a wish list together of the best actors in the world, thinking you're probably never going to have a, sh a chance to actually work with them. And it was pretty astonishing and humbling when the actors that we reached out to, Charlize Theron and, and Matthew McConaughey, decided they want to be a part of this movie. And, and I think really for them it was a similar thing with me. They saw something of their own experience, something of their own families within the, the, the confines of the story. And in fact, you know, at the time three years ago we started working with Charlize, she was a brand new mom and so she was kind of struggling with those things and enjoying the joys that come with it as well. And she was able to bring perspective of a mother caring for her child to this role here because she's something of a, of a makeshift mother for Kubo. 
Uh, and for, for Matthew, you know, he's a father of three children, and when he got the script, he actually read it as a bedtime story to his kids, and in, in basically in chapters, to kind of explore the story together, and it reflected on his experience growing up as well. So I think, you know, all of us viewed this thing through the prism of family, and that allowed it to make it personal for every single person that worked on this project.